Namaste, and welcome to the 21st, or I don't know, 24th episode of Yoga Vasishta. Uh, Yoga Vasishta is a very long work, so this is only the introduction, really, the first book. And this particular chapter on the opposite sex, <laughs> in the original translation by the Bengali translator, it's called Denigration of Women. So I could imagine how a lot of people would feel that's politically inappropriate. <laughs> so I tell you what, every time I say woman or women, you should hear the opposite sex, okay? If you're attracted to men, then instead of women, think men, <laughs> because it applies both ways. Now, first of all, as my Adi Guru used to say, if you think you're a woman or a man, you're in illusion, because we are not these bodies. We are beings of pure consciousness. So if you're on the bodily platform and you're thinking I'm a woman or I'm a man, then you're really not a fit student for Yoga Vasishta. You should go back and read some other works that are more appropriate for your state of advancement. But if you already understand that I'm not this body, I'm not this mind either, I am a being of pure consciousness. I am already eternal, immortal by nature. And I have really nothing to do with this body or this mind, which are simply illusory. But then we're talking, then we're speaking the same language. So without further ado, I'll read the excerpts from chapter 21. What beauty is there in the body of a woman composed of nerves, bones, and joints? She is a mere statue of flesh and a frame of moving machinery with her ribs and limbs. Separated from its flesh, skin, blood, and water, can you find anything beautiful in the female form that is worth beholding? Then why dote upon it? This fairy frame, consisting of hair and blood, cannot engage the attention of a high-minded man. The bodies of females, covered with clothing and repeatedly smeared with paints and perfumes, are in the end devoured by carnivorous beasts and worms. There is no difference between a woman and any other animal. Both are made of blood, flesh, and bones. Then why hunt after her? A woman is charming only for a short time. I look upon her merely as a cause of delusion. There is no difference between wine and a woman. Both tend equally to produce high-flown mirth and jollity, creating revelry and lust. Overindulgent men are like chained elephants. They will never come to sense, however goaded by reason. Women are the flames of vice. Though pleasing to the sight, they are as intangible as fire. They burn a man like fire consumes straw. Though they appear soft and juicy to sight, they burn from afar and are as dry as bones. They serve as fuel for the fires of hell and they are dangerous with their charm. Men's longing for women is like a vine that stretches to a great length, but bears plenty of bitter and sour fruit. A man blinded by greed for his mate is like a deer that has strayed from its herd, lost in the maze of illusion. A young man under the control of a young woman is as lamentable as an elephant in pursuit of his mate, that has fallen into a pit. Abandonment of the wife amounts to abandonment of the world, and forsaking the world is the path to true happiness. O Brahman, 
I am not content with these unmanageable enjoyments, which are as flickering as the wings of bees, and are as soon at an end as they are born. From my fear of repeated births, decay, and death, I long only for the state of supreme bliss. So this is really the teaching here. If we engage our time, energy, and mental functions in the pursuit of material happiness of whatever kind, money, power, fame, sex, or whatever, we'll wind up in a bad state. Why? Because we will repeatedly condition our mind with the idea of, I am this body. And because this body and everything connected with it are temporary, that enjoyment is sure to come to an end. And when it does, we got the blues. <laughs> so the answer, the solution to this problem is from the very beginning, do not consider yourself this body. That's all, either male or female or whatever. Because this body is not the self. Another point is, as he mentions here, forsaking the world is the path to true happiness. How can you forsake the world if you think you're the body? The body is the world in that the quality of the body and its senses determines the world that we perceive, the world that we live in. So don't fall into this trap of thinking, I am this body. And if you catch yourself doing it, shake yourself awake and make sure that you realize who you really are. Now, another point is, nowhere in this whole 1800 pages of Yoga Vasishta does Vasishta advocate celibacy. You will not find him anywhere saying you should not have sex. Just like you won't find him anywhere saying you shouldn't eat meat or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Because we are in a world full of biological living entities <laughs> who produce by sex. Sex is going to happen. It's natural. And as I have pointed out many times in these various series, if you have not gone deeply into sex and found out what it's really all about, you will always have some lingering questions, some doubts in your mind that, well, isn't, maybe there's something in the sex after all. But I'll tell you right now, what is at the bottom of sex? If you ever go totally into it with full energy, Brahman. <laughs> I had an experience, that was only uh, two years ago, three years ago, at age 67, where I finally got to the bottom of sex. Huh? Finally went all the way into it with full energy. And what happened? I had a vision of Brahman. Now, I've been having visions of Brahman since 1984, so this was nothing new. But it confirmed that Tantra is a valid approach to self-realization. Now, you notice I'm very careful to use the word approach. It's still not the summit of self-realization. It's only a validation of the idea that Brahman is the ultimate reality. Once you have your first path realization, or once you have a vision of Brahman by any means, whether it be Tantra, Hatha Yoga, Bhakti, Mantra, meditation, or however it happens, it can happen other ways as well. And it has to various people. As soon as you get that vision of the all-pervading spiritual light of consciousness, 
Then it's time to shift gears. It's like, okay, this is real. I've seen it. I know it. I remember it. Because you can't have sex 24 hours a day. You can't even meditate 24 hours a day. What to speak of do yoga or chant or whatever, whatever your method is for approaching that vision. But you can be conscious 24 hours a day. Once you understand that consciousness is Brahman and I am consciousness. At that point, you become independent of whatever external methods you might be using in the beginning to approach it. At that point, you become eligible for real self-realization. By that, I mean direct awareness of Brahman as consciousness, your consciousness. <laughs> That's why when Raman Maharshi says, you should meditate on who am I? Who am I? We can read in a book that I am Brahman, I am consciousness, or we can hear somebody tell it to us again and again. But it doesn't have real meaning until we experience it for ourselves. I am pure consciousness is an experience, not a doctrine not a rule. Yoga Vasishta doesn't make any rules, you'll notice anywhere. But what he does is that he convinces you of a certain point of view. And that point of view is, I'm not this body, I am consciousness and consciousness is Brahman. Therefore, I am Brahman. It's easy enough to say, but it has to become a direct experience. And I'm telling you here, it's not going to happen if you are attached to this body, if you are attached to sex life, if you are attached to your mates. It can't happen because you have a false sense of identity, a false ego. And that ego is identified with materiality. And because of that, you will not be able to see the all-pervading light of consciousness. I'm smiling because there's a little bird on the windowsill here, uh, looking at the, the berries on the tree outside the window. And he's just really cute. <laughs> and he showed up when I was talking about all-pervading <laughs> consciousness. You see that all beings, all forms of life, have the same current of life consciousness, the same life energy that flows in you is flowing in all these beings and even in the air and the ground and the water. That this is the universal life energy of Brahman. And this is the reality. Therefore, Yoga Vasishta counsels us again and again huh? to be very skeptical of the body and the senses and even the mind. Because the mind, after all, evolved as a way of protecting the body. So the mind is like paranoid, you know? <laughs> Everything the mind sees that reminds it of something that happened in the past that was painful or difficult or threatening then it immediately goes into a panic. <laughs> but that's the mind. And that's why the mind must be controlled. The mind is part of the body. It's identified with the body. It brings us into body consciousness, which kills any attempt at self-realization. So the mind has to be controlled. Thinking has to be directed in a positive and productive way. And that way is given again and again in Yoga Vasishta. And all we have to do is hear it and read it. And of course, by the way, uh, I put the link in the comments or in the description of the video that you should read the whole thing. And then you will get the real context 
of the spiritual lessons to be given later on. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam